All right, welcome back everyone to the to the chalkboard and uh, from the slides. So we talked a lot qualitatively because they had a lot of, I guess, pictures, but we can pretty much summarize that Newton's third law, it says you have forces and the forces arise from interactions. And so you cannot just have a force by itself, it has to have a reaction force. So the forces, in other words, they come in pairs. So whereas, chapter, uh, whereas Newton's first law set the tone for where Newton's laws apply, uh, so you need an inertial frame of reference, and it says um, if the net force is equal to zero in an inertial frame of reference, then the acceleration will be zero, and vice versa. And then Newton's second law says if you have a net force on an object, and now the third law says, well, if the object is experiencing a force, it must be interacting with something else, and the object also applies a force back on that on that on that uh, entity that applied the force on it. So let us do a couple of uh, problems here. Uh, the first one was um, the one for uh, tension. You have two objects. Object A is heavier than object B, and so I will do it with numbers first, and then I will. Uh, 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 and then we'll look at it qualitatively and see why that is the case. So let's say you have object B here, and it is, this is called mass of B, and it is, let's say it is uh, three uh, kilograms, right? Three kilograms. And object B is connected by a string to object A and A here. And let's say it is two uh, kilograms, Two kilograms, and they're resting on a frictionless, frictionless surface. Right? They're resting on a frictionless surface. And the question is, what are the forces here? Uh, what are the forces on object B? Well, the forces on object B got gravity downward and normal force upward. Forces on object A, gravity downward, and the normal force upward. Let's say the strain here is not under any tension because they're not being pulled. And so what we decide to do is come along and we will apply a force here. And that force is, we'll tie them by a rope and apply a force F equal to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 30, uh, let's say F is equal to 30 newtons. I'm going to pull them to the right with a force of 30 newtons. So. Uh, that's the case, all right? And by the way, I would like to show you a demonstration of that before I even continue uh, doing the problem. So here are the two objects I have here, and they're connected by a string. And the string, when you pull it, you need to pull it from both ends. You cannot have tension in a string by pulling it in one end. You see, the string will stay loose. I have to fix it on one end and then pull on the other end. So now you have tension. Secondly, so strings, to have tension, you have to tie them from both ends. Secondly, uh, the string is assumed to be very lightweight, so it's ideally it's massless. And thirdly, strings do not push, they only pull. So if I try to push with a string, it just doesn't push. So here's a card, card one, and I'm going to pull it from this way to the right. And card two is uh, card A, card B, they're connected together. And as I pull on this one, you see the, ten the tension here is loose. It doesn't have any tension. As I pull, object B will be pulled. So object A, this is object B. And actually, I drew them this way, so let me change it this way so they just match. So object A and object B. Uh, I, I put a weight here so to make object B heavier. So as I pull them, they will accelerate. And their acceleration will be the same. So every time object A moves to the right, object B also has to move. Okay? It has to move. And it has to move uh, with the same speed and, same, and it has to accelerate in the same way. And so again, tension, you cannot use it to push. So you see this, I can push on the rope, but it doesn't push the object. It only pulls. Okay? All right. So let us go back to the, to the problem. Okay, welcome back. Let's get to my chart here. A different 
color. They're being pulled with 30 newtons. And the question is, what is the tension here? Right? What's the tension here? So they're connected. And remember, tension, what does it do? This object pulls on the rope this way, and this object is being pulled by the rope that way, so the object will pull on the rope that way. So this rope here, this piece of string, is being pulled to the right by this object, and it's being pulled to the left by the three kilogram object. And it's, since it's ideal, the tension is the same on both ends. I'm not interested in the rope itself. I want to know the tension here. The tension on this end, the rope always pulls. So the rope pulls on object A this way with the tension T, and it pulls on object B also with the same tension T because the rope is massive. So that's how we concluded that. Okay. So, all right, great. So now the, the first question is, what's the acceleration of these as they move? And second question is, um, what would be the, the tension here? What would the tension be? So I can, I can do it two ways. Let's do it. The first way, I say, all right, Newton's second law says the net force on an object is equal to the, for, uh, the mass of that object times the acceleration of that object. So now what is the object? What is the system that I'm trying to study? I can look at it as object B by itself, object A by itself, or I can study object A, ob object A, B, and the string in between all as a whole. So I will consider object B first by itself, and then A by itself, and then solve the problem that way. And then later I will solve the problem using uh, uh, objects A and B as one piece. Okay, so let's look at the net force on object A. Let's look at, uh, so here is the x direction. Uh, here is the y direction. We're not interested in the y direction. There is no motion this way. And it's a frictionless surface. So uh, if we, if there was friction, then yeah, we will need the normal force to relate it to friction. But for now, we're not interested in that. So it's frictionless. So what's the only force in the horizontal direction on mass B? Well, the only force on it, I see, is the tension. Gravity is down, normal force is up, so they don't even enter. So I say the net force on object B, so for the mass B, the net force on object B is there is only tension, and it's to the right, so it's positive. It will equal to the mass of object B times the acceleration of object B. I can call it the acceleration of object B for now. And then the mass of object A, uh, for I'm sorry, for object A, what are the forces on object A? Well, object A is here. I see there is a force of 30 newtons to the right, and there is a tension to the left. So, I've already, the net force will be the force to the right minus the tension because it's to the left. That's the net force. And that has to equal to the mass times acceleration. So, times the acceleration of object A, object A, because that's the force on object A. Now, what concept did I use here? It's Newton's second law. And then, uh, what concept did I gave me the right to call this one t and this one also t. It's an ideal string. I know that the tension both ends will be the same. All right, so I use Newton's second law. I use the fact that it's an ideal string. All right, great. Next, what? it seems like I have one end noun, so that's the tension, and I have another end noun, which is the uh, uh, acceleration due to b, uh, acceleration of object b, and the acceleration of object B uh, of object A. So it seems like I have one, two, three unknowns and only two equations, and I'm in trouble. Well, don't worry. These two objects are moving together, so they're constrained to move along the x-axis. So every time this one advances, this one also advances, and we argued that the acceleration would be the same. So really, this is not two unknowns, rather it's only one unknown. And so I'm going to take the subscript acceleration of object B, of acceleration of object A, both have the same acceleration. Okay, how did I come to that conclusion? That's the constraint, because they're constrained. Okay, I have this, now what do I do? Well, uh, I can do this, I can, I have two equations, two unknowns, I can just add the two equations there. I see T and minus T, I can add them. So let's add the two equations. If I add this equation and this equation, what do I get? Well, I get t plus f minus t, and t cancels minus t, and so I just end up with, with f on the left side. And what on the right side? I will have mba plus maa. 
And so if you add them together, you get the mass of B times the acceleration plus the mass of A times the acceleration, and so you can just factor the acceleration. So, all right. So now, therefore, the acceleration will equal to the force divided by MA plus MB. And the force is, in our case, it's 30. MA plus MB, that's 2, th 2 plus 3, that's 5. And so I get 6 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. Uh, the next thing is I would like to know what the tension uh, what the tension is. I can use either equation, this one or this one. So the tension, if I can substitute here and say, all right, well, the tension is the mass of B, that's 3, times the acceleration. We found what the acceleration is. It's 6, so that means 18, 18 newtons. 18 newtons, this one is 30 newtons. So the conceptual problem that we tried to answer earlier, I said we'll come back to it, is they said which tension would be more? Is this force larger than this? And the answer is yes. This force had to be larger than this. Why? Um, why? Okay. Well, both objects accelerate. And they're accelerating at the same acceleration. So this force if I consider these two objects as a whole, this force has to accelerate a five kilogram object at this acceleration, so you need a larger force. Whereas this force of tension that's applied only on the three kilograms here, the force of tension is only accelerating a three kilogram object at six meters per second squared, whereas the 30 newtons here is accelerating five kilograms at six meters per second squared. So this, this force had to be larger than this because you need a larger force to cause the same acceleration if you have a larger mass. Okay, that's why. Uh, so now I said we can do it alternatively. I can, we can say this object and this object plus the rope, the rope is massless, they're just one system. So if I consider all of these as one system, as one system, what's external to this system? What is, which force is external? You see that this is internal. The, this force and this force, they're internal, so they cancel. So the only force that's external will be, I basically, another way to write it is this way. You just have a five kilogram object, and then it's being pulled to the right with a force F equal to 30 newtons. And the question is, what's the acceleration of that object? Well, the acceleration in the x direction would be the force over the mass, so that's 30 over 5, and that is 6. Okay, that's that. So, quickly, much quicker than that. Uh, so, which one would you use? If you are interested only in the acceleration of the objects, then you would use this approach. Just choose them as one system. It's easier. If you're interested to dig deeper and say, well, by the way, they're connected, I want to know what the tension is. Let's say this is a tow truck and it's pulling another car and your rope can only handle, let's say, 15 newtons. Well, 18 would be too much and you know that uh, your rope will break. Maybe you need to put two ropes or a better one, a stronger one. Okay. All right, so here is the next uh, example that I wanted to do. I would actually do it here. Very similar to this, uh, or in fact, let me do it in the next slide. So here's the example. I have a two kilogram object. I have a three kilogram object, all right? And then I'm going to push them here this way. I'm going to push them with a force F equal to 30 newtons. F equal to 30 newtons. All right, I got a force of 30 newtons. And the question is, what would be the acceleration of the objects? It's there on a frictionless surface, and I'm interested in the x direction only. This is my x direction, and this is my y direction. And the question is, what's the acceleration in the x direction? Uh, the answer is, I can consider them as a, an entire system, because they would be moving together. And I can say, 
ignore the fact that if you wrap them in a plastic bag or put them in a box that you can't really see what's inside, all you're concerned about is you have five kilograms, that's all. And so what's the acceleration of a five kilogram object? Uh, if you push it with a force F equal to 30 newtons, the acceleration is simply the force over the total mass, and that's 30 over five, and it would be six meters per second squared. On the other hand, you can dig deeper and say, yeah, actually there are two objects. Object, the two kilograms is being pushed from the, right, from the left by 30 newtons, but then the two kilograms will interact with the three kilograms, so the two kilogram will push on the three kilograms, so the three kilogram will push back on the two kilogram with an equal and opposite force because of Newton's third law. And so what is that force between them? What is that force between them? Well, we can draw our two kilogram object, here is the two kilogram, and ask what are the forces on the two kilogram, on the two kilogram object by itself? Well, you get your force here. F equal to 30 newtons. Is that it? No. The 2 kilogram runs into the 3 kilogram, so the 3 kilogram will push back. There will be a normal force, and that normal force is this one. I will call it N, that normal force. And, uh, and it's to the left, I know that, because the normal force always pushes away. And so the question is, what's the normal force? Uh, we can calculate it. I say that the net force on object of the on the two kilogram is equal to the mass times acceleration. What's the net force on the two kilogram? Well, you get the force to the right, that's 30 newtons, minus the normal force because it's to the left, n, equal to the mass times acceleration. The mass is two, and then the acceleration, we just calculated it, it's six, okay? And so I will have 30 minus n is equal to 18, and therefore the normal force will be what? So I move n over there and take this one this way. So you get 30 minus 18, that's 12, 12 newtons. So the normal force is 12 newtons, okay? Now I ask, what are the forces on the three kilogram? Let's look at the three kilogram. Here is the three kilogram object. What are the forces on it? Uh, the forces on the three kilogram object will be horizontal in the x direction, that is. I, I know there is gravity in normal, but in the x direction, what is? Well, uh, the two kilogram pushes on the three kilogram and the three kilogram pushes back. So on the three kilogram, there is only the normal force due to the two kilogram. And I know that it's also N. Uh, I mean, I know ahead of time it's 12, uh, it's 12 newtons, but let's calculate it anyways. So the net force on the three kilograms is N. That's the net force. And Newton's second law says the net force equal to the mass times acceleration. The net force in the x direction is equal to ma. The mass is 3, and the acceleration is 6. And what is, uh, the acceleration was 6, and 3 uh, times 6 is uh, 18 newtons. How am I getting uh, 30 over 5 is 6, uh, and then 30... Uh, minus n is equal to 12. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 2 times 6 is 12. Good thing I checked. Yeah, 2 times 6 is 12. And then, so if you move, yeah, this will be 18. Sorry. So good thing I cut it, so the video would be okay. And then, uh, so the normal force is 18, and this one tells me that the normal force is 18. All right. I... Uh, all right, <laughs> good. Next, let me do it this way now and see if you're, you would be, uh, if you can make a guess. So I'm going to reorient my uh, masses. I'll put the three kilogram here first. I'll put the two kilogram here second, and then I'm going to push with a force F equal to 30 newtons. I'm going to push this way. Just change the order and then push. It's frictionless surface and so on. So my question to you is, first one is, will the acceleration change? And then the normal force between them, will it be more, less, or the same? So if you want, pause the video and try to do it on your own. All right? So take a moment. Okay. So hopefully you paused and came back. I'm going to do that. Well, 
the total mass, the system still has five kilograms. And so I can just imagine that this is just a big five kilogram chunk. If I, again, if you wrap them in a plastic bag or put them in a box that you have no idea what's inside, because after all, the three kilograms consists of little masses, right? It, it does consist of little masses, atoms at the end. Um, and then the two kilogram also consists of many little masses, but I'm considering the three kilogram as a collection of all of these masses. So now I'm going to consider a five kilogram to be the collection of these little masses, all of them from the two and the three kilograms. So it's a, a five kilogram object being pushed by a 30 Newton force. And so the acceleration would be 30 over five and that would be six meters per second squared. And now how about the normal force between them? The answer is the normal force will be less. The reason is this normal force here, you needed the normal force to accelerate the three kilograms at an acceleration of six meters per second squared. In here, you need a normal force to accelerate the two kilograms at six meters per second squared. So the acceleration is still the same. So the normal force would be different because you need less force to accelerate the two kilogram than, you need, uh, than uh, when you accelerated the three kilogram to that same acceleration. Well, let's do it. So let's look at the three kilogram by itself. Here's the three kilogram. Hopefully I won't make that mistake again. So I, uh, what, what's, what are the forces on the three kilogram in the X direction? You got the 30 Newtons. And then the three kilogram pushes on the two. It interacts with the two. So the two interacts back. I'm going to call it N, but this N is different than this. We're doing a different problem now. And so, and then there is an acceleration this way, six meters per second squared. So it's uh, Newton's second law says the net force on an object equal to the mass times acceleration. The net force is the 30 to the right minus n, which is to the left, equal to the mass times acceleration. The mass is 3, the acceleration is 6, and so I get 18, and then 30 minus 18 is 12, so the normal force would be 12 newtons. Now let's look at the 2 kilogram on its own, where we get a normal force equal to 12. Let's see. Okay. I didn't make any mistakes. Here is the two kilogram. There is the gravity, normal force. Oh, sorry. Uh, the normal force, I should say the normal force from the floor. And now there is the nor uh, object, the three kilograms pushes on it. That's also another normal force, but it's the normal force from the three kilogram. And that's the horizontal, and that's N. That's the only force you have horizontally. And so uh, the net force is just the normal force on the two kilograms along the X direction equal to the mass times acceleration. The mass is 2 and the acceleration is 6. And 2 times 6 is 12 newtons. And lo and behold, they are the same. They are the same, as they should, as they should be. Okay? And so that's how we would apply Newton's uh, third law. So uh, I'm probably running out of time from this video. Let me go to the next video and do a couple more problems. And then we will move on to chapter, uh, chapter what? Eight. Yeah. All right. See you in the next video.